So fun fact, it was this day in 2012 when Dean Lombardi traded for Jeff Carter, who became the missing piece in the Kings puzzle that led them to their very first Stanley Cup championship. And it was this day in 2017 where we perhaps realized, looking at the standings, that we weren't even going to make it to the playoffs this year. We are essentially playing our way out of a playoff spot. We've been doing it for several games now, but with the Flames doing so well, who were our biggest competition, uh, especially within our division, uh, winning the last seven of ten games, one game lost in overtime. So that's a good deal of points they're getting, and a good deal of points we are just leaving on the table. Because we're not playing up to our potential. This is what I don't understand. If we were a team like the Avalanche who only had a few good players and clearly had holes in their lineup, I would get that. But we have players like Drew Doughty, who I am actually not going to fault at all in this game. There was a save in the third period where he just was magic. Drew gives his all every night. But then you have players like Jeff Carter and Andrzej Kopitar and Marion Gabrick and Tyler Toffoli, and these are huge goal-scoring names. Tanner Pearson. These are guys who should be stepping up and getting points in the back of the other team's net and helping a poor boot eye out. We just, we should not be losing, and I can't for the life of me understand why until I look at the things that we do wrong. And there were many, many in this game, and I shall highlight them for you all. The first one came three minutes and 16 seconds in when Jake Muzzin, whose neck I have been wanting to strangle for God knows how many games now, worst turnover of the century, right on the blue line in the Kings offensive zone, literally no one back there except Brad Marchand, who takes the puck, from Muzzin, streams all the way down the ice, absolutely no resistance, no one to pass to, but that doesn't matter because he can rift it right past Budai, who really wasn't expecting to have to do anything with that because the Kings had been kind of pretty dominant, actually, down the other end. And therein goes any lead the Kings were hoping for. Three minutes, 16 seconds in, so they're giving up early goals. And once they did that, they kind of collapsed in on themselves. Uh, they stopped making clean and crisp passes. By the time it got to the third period, you know, I don't know exactly how many shots they had on goal, but for the first 14 minutes, there was one. The Berlin's defense was just completely shutting down any chance the Kings had of barely even entering their offensive zone, let alone setting up a play inside it. They were stifling, and the Kings were not helping themselves by any stretch of the imagination. Derek Forbert, for the first part, was clearly taking shooting lessons from Drew Doughty and shooting them all wide. He wasn't the only one. And of all the things to learn from Drew Doughty, maybe shooting's not, not the best one. He's going to redeem himself, though, towards the end of the period where the Kings had power play. Something else I'm going to... Uh, point to as a reason that the Kings have been pretty lackluster as of late. Their power play sucks. They play power plays the same way they play five on five, which is a lot of grinding and dumping and chasing, which is stupid when you have a man advantage because as soon as the defense gets the puck, they're just going to clear it. They don't have icing, so it's just going to go completely to the other end of the ice, and this is not the way you set up plays on a power play. This is my huge pet peeve because we should be better at it. It should it should be the easiest way to score goals and the Kings aren't doing anything with them. So I was complaining about that for the first like minute and a half of the power play until finally Derek Forbert, no I'm sorry it wasn't Forbert, it was Martinez who we're probably going to trade away instead of Jake Muzzin and I'm going to cry because jazz hands guys. Jazz hands. Suck at Stanley Cup. Anyway, so Martinez gets the puck to Kempe who... Uh, has played, what, six NHL games now? Makes a stunning play. Uh, sets up the shot, gets his own rebound, and instead of trying to shoot the rebound again, shoots the puck to Derek Forbert, who is completely open, and he wrists the kind of rebound right up and over the backup goalie of the Boston Bruins. And it's gorgeous. It's a textbook 
power play, or not even power play, it's a textbook goal. This is what you want. And this is the other thing I'm going to complain about in regards to why the kings aren't doing it. They have no net front presence. You get people to the front of the net, goaltenders will give up rebounds, and more often than not, you can put them in if you're a good goal scorer. Gabrick, God knows how many times, if he had just been in position, I have seen him do it on many occasions. Get yourself to the front of the net, you have better chances to fully Carter. I just, it, the whole night, I was just screaming, get to the front of the net. Pick up the rebounds. They're going to do better than when you just shoot the puck straight into the goaltender. He's going to get it if you're shooting it into his chest. <sighs> so anyway, we got a goal. We're equalized. There's maybe like three minutes left in the first period. And we think, oh, good. Okay. We've got a little bit of, le oh, wait, never mind. Less than 45 seconds later, they score again. Thankfully, Daryl Sutter or somebody on the back of the bench there was paying attention and they used their coach's challenge and it was called for offsides. So blatantly, obviously offsides that we actually won the challenge. The goal was discontinued, or dis I was going to say discontinued. <laughs> the goal was discounted and time was set back on the clock and then the Kings proceeded to spend the next couple of minutes uh, at the end of the first period uh, trying to give up the goal that they had just gotten back. So yeah, we go into the second period and Carter's making some nice plays. None of them are hitting the back of the net. Uh, oh, but you know what, about a minute in, one of the Bruins shots is, yeah, so it's two to one. They really didn't take them that long to get their lead back. Uh, at one point there was a great that 70s line play where uh, it was a three on two, Papa Carter comes down the center, he drop passes back to, uh, to Foley who takes the shot and Pearson just like this close to not being in position at the front of the net to get the damn rebound that was open. Case in point. Uh, so we got a couple of power plays in that period that again made, made me want to cry or tear my hair out or I don't even know, go help them coach on how to do a successful power play? No. Uh, the second one came from something that probably could have been a Jeff Carter goal. He was on the breakaway and he got slashed and they didn't call a penalty shot, but that's something that I, had he not been slashed, I probably would have expected Carter to make, but the resulting power play did kind of exactly what Boston wanted it to, um, which was absolutely nothing for the LA Kings. Uh, Kyle Clifford, no, it wasn't Clifford. I'm just so used to Clifford being the one to beat the snot out of people. Uh, Braden McNabb, who I haven't been talking about lately because he's just been bad. I just, I can't even, he hasn't been McSmash. He's just been all over the place and slow and not completing really anything. Uh, so he and Marchand get into it and they both get minors for roughing. That was not how far they wanted to go with that fight, though. It got broken up before it could get the fight for fighting. Four and four, of course, does absolutely nothing for the Kings. And we go into the third period, and like I said, one shot on goal in the first 14 minutes. I could, can't count how many they had uh, because it can't have been much more than one for that period. Uh, the Bruins were just shutting them down. There was absolutely nothing going for the Kings offense whatsoever. Budai, bless his heart, coming up big at the other end. He gave up two goals in this game. You should expect to at least be able to get to overtime when your goaltender is bailing you out like that. And instead, the Kings got two empty net. No, they didn't get, I'm sorry, they gave up. Two empty net goals. I also need to go explain to them how an empty net works because when the puck has like two minutes and a half maybe left in the first last period, I'm sorry, and you're trailing by one and the puck is in your offensive zone, that's when you pull the goaltender, not when there's a minute 45 left and the puck is in the neutral zone and they can steal it away and really, really easily make that first empty net goal. So it's three to one with about one minute and two seconds left. It wasn't even hard for the Bruins to do that. 
And then they pull their they pull Budai again, and it's four to one, and that was the final score. I love Drew Daddy, but when his contract comes up, I do not blame him if he does not want to stay here. He is the only one consistently doing his job and putting his ass on the line. He makes some plays that just, he has so much heart. He puts so much effort into everything he does, and he's so, so good at what he does. It just, it makes me sad to see kind of everybody else around him just collapse in on themselves. It's really, really kind of depressing watching this train wreck of a season and watching them slip further and further out of contention. They basically have lost all their games in hand. They have one now on the Flames, uh, but they are four points behind them. We play do play the Flames four times before the end of the season, but realistically looking at it, guys, you're not going to see some very happy recaps for me coming up in the near future. I'm I'm just guessing. We do, however, have a week until the trade deadline, a little bit less. It is March 1st, so maybe Lombardi makes some moves. I know he's been looking at the Avalanche quite a lot lately. Duchesne, McKinnon, uh, Landeskog. Maybe, like I said, it's likely if we do make a trade, whether now or in the offseason, we're going to be losing Martin. And I'm going to cry. Uh, so on that horribly depressing note, um, we leave you with Chris Sutter busting a move.